Super grateful to Dr. Rachelle for sharing with us her expertise as a naturopathic doctor in regard to how we can sustain and protect ourselves while we address this COVID-19 situation. So please take a listen, and most importantly, let's focus on coming up stronger. Thank you, guys. I am a naturopathic doctor, and some of y'all might not have heard of that, but um, it is pretty much a doctor who uses natural therapies to bring the body back into balance. And so when I say natural therapies, that can be food. We should be using our food as medicine. That can be herbs or botanicals, as people put it. Um, it might be homeopathy. It might be just re- balancing the body or realigning the body in certain ways so that we improve more energy flow, more blood circulation, and that way we're moving the toxins in and out the body. So yeah, it's, it's a different type of medical profession. Um, and just to go into a little bit more about how I got into it, I guess you could say, and why I'm passionate about it is I, even when I graduated from high school, I was like, you know, I don't know, I want to do something in medicine, but I didn't know what. And I actually ended up being a chemistry major and I did a concentration in biochemistry. And the reason why I did that is because I love learning medical chemistry. And that was where we actually learned about plants and how they were using those chemical components in plants to make pharmaceuticals. So that's what drove me into that part. And then afterwards, I actually ended up doing um, cancer research for a bit of time, probably six mm -hmm. years. And um, while I was doing that, I actually worked on my master's of public health education degree mm -hmm. as well. So I have an MPH, um, love going out in the community, educating them about prevention, help, um, what it means when people are given a certain diagnosis, what that means is happening in their body, because a lot of times they don't get that explanation. And so um, I went from that to what do I really want to work on? And I literally Googled herbs and medicine and found naturopathic medicine. So um, moved all the way from North Carolina to Portland, Oregon, and went to naturopathic medical school. So in naturopathic medical school, that is the perfect combination of learning conventional medicine, doing all of the ologies, as I put it, including <laughs> basic sciences. But then we add on years of nutrition, years of herbal medicine, um, years of homeopathy, as well as chiropractic or naturopathic manipulations in the body. Um, and I did extra coursework when it came to some of the herbal medicine. So that was always kind of like what I was most passionate about. So. So whenever the body is out of alignment, that's when we start to experience disease. So that might be, you know, you could even take it to something being basic, like something is too hot or too cold, you know there's too much um, dampness or phlegm in the body versus the body being too dry. So those are kind of like the basic principles that you can think about. And then we want to shift it and bring it back into balance. So, you know, especially like dealing with allergy season or cold and flu season, that's when we're talking about things tend to be a little bit more damp. So we want to dry them up, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then heat, that's another component too. Sometimes we get... Um, as you put it, like cold wind invasion. I'm also trained in Chinese medicine, so <laughs> forgot to add that little part in there. No um, <laughs> so cold wind invasion, but um, yeah, you know, if it's too cold and we want to heat things up, if it's too hot, we want to cool it down. The reason why we want to bring the body back into balance is because that's when all of your biochemical pathways so how your cells function, how you metabolize foods, how you break them down, how you digest them, how you use those nutrients in each cell, it's going to work optimally whenever there is this balance that's happening. And so that's what we want to make sure is that you have that balance.
definitely when it comes to just any type of immune function, I always tell people, you know, your immune system is in your gut. So it's not just everything that's circulating around, but it's also in your gut. So we need to make sure that one, the foods that you are eating are the proper foods for your body. It's not going to be anything that's going to bring your body out of balance. So we want to make sure we're eating foods that don't cause what we call inflammation in the body, right? Um, two, I want to make sure that you're actually digesting your foods properly. So if you're digesting your foods properly, that means that I couldn't be a naturopathic doctor if I don't mention it. I want to make sure you're pooping regularly, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> so you need to be pooping regularly. I want to make sure that things are easy when it comes to that. Um, and then the third component is, are the nutrients going from the actual like breakdown and into the cells? So are your cells absorbing those nutrients? And that's where we do some testing more up on a um, chemical basis or biological basis. But, you know, those three components will definitely make sure that things are working and running when it comes to your immune system. So, um, and I do have to put this disclaimer out there. It's like, you know, I'm not saying that I am preventing, treating, or curing COVID-19 whatsoever, right. but what I'm doing is giving you information that's going to support your immune system because that's what we need to do during this time period is really make sure our immune system is supported. So, there's going to be certain foods that we need to make sure we have on board. So I definitely promote a whole foods diet. So whole foods meaning getting in your fresh fruits and vegetables, especially during this time period, it's going to be more so fresh vegetables. And I went to the grocery store. I think we mentioned this before. I was just doing my regular grocery shopping, but it was in the midst of all of this happening. And it was just like, not a lot of people were getting the fresh fruits and vegetables. I got kale, I got spinach, I got mango and peppers and, you know, things like that. So I could be cooking. If you're spending more time at home. You should be able to cook more, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I was getting things like that, but the fresh fruits and vegetables were not being utilized. Even the canned vegetables were not being used. So the main thing left on the shelf was the low sodium chunky veggie soup. And I'm <laughs> like, that's what you need. You know, <laughs> that's what you need during this time period. So, you know, making sure that you're getting in your vegetables, dark green leafy vegetables, a colorful plate of vegetables is so important. Because those foods actually have like the chemicals in it as well as the nutrients to actually boost your antioxidant level. So with antioxidants, we're talking about things that are helping to kill whatever might be happening in the body in the sense of um, bacteria, viruses, any type of pathogen, parasites, things like that. When we boost up your antioxidant level, then we're going to actually be supporting your immune system with that. And so those dark green leafy vegetables have more of those nutrients in it. I am a huge proponent of using the spices and the garnishes that we usually use like in high amounts, especially when it comes to immune support. So we've got garlic, we've got um, onions. Those actually have a component or a couple of components called allium or allicin in them. And so those can be antimicrobial, meaning they can support fighting bacteria, they can support fighting viruses, they can support fighting um, fungal infections, things like that. There's also um, oregano and thyme spices that I love to use. I really love to use thyme as well. We need to be using those in higher amounts, not just as, like I said, a little garnish, but really cooking with them as well. And then um, other things that I also think about are those ones that are going to be a little bit more spicy. They're going to be warming up your system to help dry out any mucus. So mm -hmm. that's going to be things like ginger and things like cayenne. 
-hmm. right? So, and I'm not talking about like using ginger powder, like mm -hmm. actually getting the fresh ginger and, mm -hmm. you know, shaving some pieces and adding it to your meals. Inflammation is almost like a double-edged sword. It is good, but then when it gets to be a little too much or if it's not enough, then it can be bad for the body. So with inflammation, that's actually your body is responding and trying to get rid of something. So the reason why you spike a fever is because we're trying to get the body temperature up so we can break down and kill whatever bacteria there might be. Also with that fever, there's going to be an increase in your white blood cells which are going to kind of like gobble up the bacteria, yeah. gobble up the viruses and um, get it out your system. Then you have your increase in mucus, right? Which is also an inflammatory process, but that is actually your immune system getting rid of things. So that's like when we want mucus to kind of flow and you okay. want to get rid of it, not just have it sit in your sinuses or sit in your chest. Makes sense. So, um, that's kind of like the whole inflammatory process, right? It needs to be moderated though. And mm -hmm. so that's how come you spike a fever, it comes down and then your body regulates itself. When you get that high fever and it stays elevated, that's not good. Because mm -hmm. what we start to do is we start to break down proteins in our cells. And we don't want to do that because we need those other proteins to actually like work on metabolism and build mm -hmm. different amino acids and things like that. So having your, blood, your um, fever being too high for too long of a time, it can be detrimental to your body. And so, you know, that's one of our concerns always. And I, I do know that's also one of the concerns whenever it comes to the, the COVID-19 is that, you know, we don't, what's happening is people's immune system is going too far in one direction. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we don't want to promote. I would definitely say first and foremost, if you feel like you're experiencing the symptoms of COVID-19, you do need to contact your medical provider and let them know. They're gonna tell you one or two things. They're probably gonna say, okay, stay at home, let us know if your symptoms progress, or they're going to say, come in. One of the issues is that we're having an overflooding of people coming into um, the hospitals and things like that, but we're trying to just restrict that to people that are in severe cases. So what I want to do is just let you guys know, please still try to do things that are you know, at home to help yourself. Don't just sit and say, oh, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to quarantine myself. You need to be doing some things to support your immune system. So um, the foods that I mentioned, definitely that can be a good support. Um, definitely increasing your vitamin C as well. And so you can do that through foods, right? Blueberries, oranges, all of those have high amounts of vitamin C. And also taking oral vitamin C as well might be beneficial. Um, and then... You know, we have different hydrotherapy techniques that we do. Sometimes they can be very beneficial. Sometimes they actually kind of like get you to that point of um, your, your body is right there at its peak of, you know, like fighting everything and then it will reduce itself. Mm -hmm. So with hydrotherapy, that means using water as therapy. So um, that might be doing like, hot showers ending with cold. And when I say hot showers, I'm like, you know, not scolding hot. I don't want anyone to burn themselves, but it definitely be warmer than usual. Mm -hmm. And then alternating with cold. So what that's doing is it's, an, it's causing like a pumping action. You're vasodilating and extending, expanding your blood vessels. And then with the cold, you're constricting them. Mm -hmm. So you keep doing that and that is actually going to help the pumping action whenever it comes to your cells releasing toxins, right? Okay. Gotcha. Um, you know, there's also some old school naturopathic therapies where we say use cool or warming socks. So um, that's where you actually put on, you 
soak some socks in some cold water, you put them in the freezer, and then after they, they're kind of like frozen a little bit, you put them on and then you put some wool socks over top of them. So mm -hmm. that's another way of just kind of like supporting the immune system and bringing things down, right? Um, I do know when some people do that, they feel like their lymph nodes get a little bit more larger. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's actually because in your lymph nodes are your white blood cells. So you're producing more. It's, it's kind of like sparking your immune system. Gotcha. Yeah. And then, you know, there's different herbs that we can do as well. I definitely like um, nettles. I definitely like, uh, nettles are going to kind of like, um, they're nutritive, but they also support and can be an antihistamine. And so decrease inflammation in that way. Um, there's dandelion root, which is going to help support your kidneys and your liver with just detoxifying things. Um, a lot of people are using elderberry syrup. Um, it's very beneficial. It's antimicrobial. It's soothing, especially if you're having sore throats. But I will say that with all of this being said, a lot of the herbs are going off the shelf very quickly. It's hard for me to even get some for my practice. Um, and we have to remember too with herbs is that they're, they are, um, what's the word? Wildcrafted, you know, mm -hmm. at certain time periods of the year. So we wait for the buds to come up. We wait for the roots mm -hmm. and things like that. And right. so with everyone wanting like a mad dash of every single thing that everyone is putting <laughs> out there, it's like, you know, we're, we're starting to get a short supply. So be generous to your community. Don't buy up everything. You know, just think of some of the things that you can do at home. Doing the teas, herbal teas are going to be beneficial. Doing lemon, mm -hmm. adding lemon to the teas, that's mm -hmm. going to make the water alkaline. Um, that's also going to help you get some of the nutrients into your cell because mm -hmm. the vitamin C actually will help that. Um, and then adding honey, you know, don't do this for kids, but adding honey, raw honey, it's actually antimicrobial as well. So adding wow. honey. Um, there's actually a, a home remedy that I love to use and it's pretty much thyme syrup. So mm -hmm. in a little bit of water, I put um, some thyme in a ball and I'll steep it for like 15 minutes, get it real dark. And then I add like two to four tablespoons of honey and mm -hmm. the juice of one lemon. And so you can actually use that as a syrup. It's going to be antimicrobial. It's going to be soothing to your mucous membranes because that's where viruses mm -hmm. attach to. I am in Richmond. Um, I am off of Marina Way South. And so I would say the best way to connect with me might be going through my website. So if you go to my website, doctor spelled out Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L-L-E.com. Um, you can find out more about me. You can find out where I'm located. My business hours are also up there with scheduling and you can always schedule for a free 20 minute phone consultation. So I've always done that. It is via Zoom, so you don't have to come into the office. Um, and so that way I can just get a better idea of what's going on with you. But I am also putting together like immune care packages for people. So, you know, even with my current clients, I'm meeting with them via Zoom. I'm still trying to maintain their health as they go through this, making sure that the immune system is supported. But then if people need to, I do offer nutritional IV therapy as well. And we can probably talk about that a little bit later in more okay. detail, but it's pretty much using active nutrients, bypassing the whole GI tract. You get it directly into your vein and you get some extra hydration at the mm. same time. And so that's a good immune boost for some people. Um, so those are the only clients that I'm actually having to come in. We're okay. still doing social distancing whenever they come in. The office is definitely being wiped down with heavy wipes all the time. So 
And we can definitely talk later too about like making your own hand sanitizer. Definitely do stay at home. Let's practice this whole self-quarantining um, aspect as best as we can. But do remember that, you know, you do still need to maintain your health. So health professionals like myself, um, we're still essential businesses. And so we are still saying, please, you know, if you need to make a doctor's appointment, just do it via Zoom or some type of um, telemedicine or telehealth, but maintain that office visit. Don't just kind of like quarantine yourself and don't talk to your healthcare provider, you know, because we want to know what's going on and we want to support you as best as we can. So please maintain those. I know there's some chiropractors that are still open as well. There's some medical doctors and private practice that are open. So, you know, still maintain the communication with your healthcare provider. Um, don't just think that you're in it by yourself and just, you know, stay positive during this time period. It's a difficult time. You know, we need to focus on our mind, body and spirit more than anything right now. There's gonna be a lot of social impact that's happening, especially when it comes mentally too. So um, I hope this isn't our new normal, but we'll see, you know. Yeah. So, but we'll see together.